The first team is fresh start, the second team is sit up. So if the second team will prepare to present right after fresh start. And number three is uh, XPVRD. XPVRD. Yeah, that's the third one. The fourth one is uh, Hazen Monaco. And then Kaz Unlocker. Then Smart, Sporting, then the Smart Doorbell, and then Flexity. Fresta is coming up. Pay attention. Will they make it to the stage? So welcome everybody. This is the presentation of the Science Hack Day Eindhoven 2013. We have nine teams presenting and we have a number of uh, nice prizes for the winners. We have here the jury, uh, Lucas Asselbergs, Erik Slaats and Richard Beilart. And uh, Richard is a technology broker uh, with expertise in technology production, matching of uh, knowledge and intelligence on uh, technical industrial matters. Erik Slaats is uh, working at Fontes University, doing a lot of innovation and education uh, projects and um, will be the chairman of the jury because the uh, chairman we were uh, proposing was Miriam Schreurs, the alderman of the city of Eindhoven, but she is ill. So we found a good replacement in Erik Slaats. And Lucas Asselberg is head of the Studium Generale of the University of Eindhoven. So I wish you a lot of success with this difficult task of choosing between all those fantastic presentations. So we start with the first one. Fresta, can you introduce the team and the name of the project and then have a five minute presentation. Yeah, I'll okay. try, try to uh, keep it short. Uh, good afternoon. So this is uh, group one, Fresta, um, the team, Edwin, um, Ben, Felix, Bart, myself. Uh, so I'll keep, uh, I will present shortly um, uh, the slides and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll give you a demo of, of what we have created. Uh, so this is Fresta, it's about urban farming, it's about homegrown vegetables. So what is the essence of, of what, what we were making? It's vegetables are vital for your health. They provide nutrition that keep you in good condition and shape. So many people would love to grow their own uh, vegetables, but not everybody has uh, green, uh, green fingers. Uh, but, but a lot of people would like uh, to grow their own uh, vegetables at home. If you just check now what technology is already uh, at hand uh, on YouTube or Vimea about hydroponics, horticulture, LEDs, uh, a lot of things are um, developing and uh, making um, uh, um, city farming uh, possible. So that's exactly what we're using uh, uh, yesterday and today. So with Fresta, you can uh, grow your own vegetables successfully. Uh, you can do it uh, healthy and fresh uh, from your kitchen. Uh, you, you can actually see them grow at your home and you're always up to date via uh, your smartphone. 
So this is the user interface that uh, Edwin uh, just created in, uh, in, in one day. Uh, so it, it gives a, a, a real life uh, status update of uh, is, the, is the water fresh, is there a fertilizer, which lights are on, uh, if the fan is working, what the humidity and the temperature is in the, in the climate of the, the vegetables. So we, well, and especially I believe, I, um, I believe this is really high tech. And um, I'm really uh, proud with, uh, with this team that uh, we created this uh, prototype in, uh, yeah, in just uh, overnight. And uh, especially uh, this team working uh, really overnight. So um, great, great job done. So we want to show now uh, how the prototype is working. Yeah, one minute left. So, the, so so what you're seeing is that the moment you open the door, um, it, it will switch to white light because then you can really see the, the vegetables as you like. Uh, you can control locally uh, the lighting. Uh, play with it, actually, but in, in general, always the, um, uh, the, the, um, the standard procedure takes over after a few minutes. So there is, um, uh, there is wind. You just uh, hear the, the fans uh, going. There is uh, moisture. Um, that's, that's all to make uh, the ideal climate for the, um, for the vegetables. And uh, actually, the guys, they don't like me to put this. Uh, a cutting plate on top because this is what what has has been created over uh, over the last uh, over the last day. Oh, this the uh, the FTC for the product. Uh, <coughs> we have here the so we have if, here. If the you jury wants to have questions, please use the microphone. Okay. Sorry. And what way does the app receive uh, the data from uh, <coughs> all this stuff? <coughs> Sorry. So we have here an, uh, an Arduino uh, running um, within the client uh, web server, and it's uploading constantly the data uh, which he receives and what he is doing to the uh, web server uh, somewhere in the cloud or uh, at home. You don't see anything of and this. And you can uh, watch the data um, uh, within the you know, HTML5 page, uh, so, your, so your web phone or, uh, or uh, on, 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 on the internet. Okay, that is, I think we have to uh, get uh, in a tight schedule. So thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Can I have an applause? Hey. Is there uh, another question from the jury or do you, shall we continue with the next one? Yeah, okay. Next one is called sit up. And sit up is located here. So who's going to do the presentation? Can we get the other mic back? Someone? Oh, here it is. Who's going to present? Hey. Hello, hello. Go ahead. <laughs> Sit up. There it is, okay. team two. Hi, uh, we are team two. Uh, my name is John, uh, that's Sander, and that's uh, Paul. Uh, we may build a computer uh, application uh, called uh, SitUp. Uh, before I uh, start with that, I want to uh, tell about uh, danger that we all are aware of, but not always realize it. It's a danger for the health of uh, computer users. Uh, we all know it, so I will go to the next slide, please. Uh, I saw, uh, yesterday I saw some people sitting like that um, with head for the, for the uh, sc uh, screen saver and it's sitting like that bent for over uh, getting problems with her neck, uh, shoulders, arms after a few hours. So that's a uh, kind of health problem. And the next one please. 
Yeah, and here, this I always sit uh, like that, always sitting down like that. Uh, it's not good for your back. And sorry, that was our, that was our de demo. So, uh, but because I'm always sitting like that, I always have problems with the lower back, but that's not only a problem in the, here in the hackathon, but for every computer users. I will read the headline, translate for you. Uh, wrong sitting opportunity costs the employee 3.3 billion euros each year. So the people are getting ill and the uh, work cannot be finished. So uh, we built a computer application and it's called uh, SitUp. Uh, yeah. so, uh, we built a computer application with uh, uh, connect, met an uh, Xbox Connect. It can stand. It uh, scans your uh, sitting position from the sideline. Uh, if you're sitting correct, then it's uh, okay, of course. But if you're sitting wrong, after a few minutes, you will get a uh, warning from you need to sit up more straight. So uh, now let's uh, the demo begin. So I'll just walk this right, this way. Uh, this is our application, it's called Setup. No, no, I'm going this way. Um, <laughs> here we see uh, Sander uh, sitting behind his desk. desk. Um, and we can see he's in the, in the correct position. I'll just have to ask if uh, she can move a little backwards because uh, that's disrupting the data. Yeah. There we go. And uh, we can see that uh, the application says he's Having a good posture, he's have his back straight, and that's good for you. But um, if he, he slouches somewhat and he uh, has his back curved, then the um, then application notices that you don't have a correct posture, and it's a little icon that notices that. And if you do it for too long, then it will uh, sound an alarm, which I just turned off <laughs> because it was uh, annoying the presentation. And also, if he uh, turns back the other way, it detects that you're also having an incorrect posture. It's all done with the Kinect. It has a depth sensor, and it uh, detects uh, your, your, your skeleton, and uh, the application will detect if, if you have a good posture. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, for future applications, uh, we had, had an idea to build it into desk chairs or to have it, have it into offices, so... Um, Everyone can can know about their own posture and be aware of it, of when they uh, do it incorrectly, <laughs> like like Sander is demonstrating to us. Thank you. Are there any questions? Questions from the jury? <laughs> yeah. So now she, now she's standing and as she walks away. The application goes back to neutral. Yeah. One question. Did you think about um, multiple people in an office? How to deal with that? Yeah. But that's what we said. Uh, ideally, you don't want to use a Kinect for scanning the body, but you want to use, uh, yeah, um, put it in, your, in, the, the, in the chair behind your desk and use sensors there. But because uh, we had a Kinect here and uh, <laughs> we, could we could scan your skeleton very easily without our, we without needing any special any special sensors, uh, we use this for demonstration purposes. But uh, generally, uh, me myself. Uh, I also had a lot of problems with my back, uh, uh, RSI, repetitive strain injury, and uh, I have to close it up. And next question. I'm familiar with a technique called touche, which is developed by Disney Studios. Uh, no. <laughs> I think you must have seen it, John, because Andreas was working with it. It can sense how you're sitting in a chair. Okay, so it's something like we did, but different. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And we. Have another applause for a great presentation. And the next one is XPVRD. No. XPVRD. You do a presentation on the yeah. Beamer? Yeah. Just how to connect it with the 
Yuri has the difficult task to uh, to think uh, of uh, what project will fit in which price because we have mobility, energy, health, open data, and special science hack day price, and the best design hack. No, so uh, we did not ask the participants to say for what price they are uh, applying. So it's up to the jury to see what is fit. You have are very free in that. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? No. Doesn't work. Can we go on with the second Hazen Monaco? What do you need for the presentation? Harmonico? What do you need for the presentation? Well, it says HMI here. That's fine. Yeah. But, uh, you, you need the projector. Yeah. Okay, maybe you can come up. Does the installation not work or the presentation? No, the, they cannot now make it to the screen. Hmm? I cannot make it to the screen to appear. Oh, you have a VGA? Yeah, yeah plug it in. But it not. What? Can we try with your laptop or something? I don't have HMI. I don't have HDMI. Yeah. Yeah. I switched it, in, but it doesn't work. Somebody on, on your screen, on your laptop. Can we put it on you because you have HMI? Uh, and then disconnect it and plug it in? Okay, it's all good. But is it the final one? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You have to switch the presentation. Can we uh, do the other one first? A couple okay. minutes. Okay, can you plug in? Do you have the HDMI? Yes, VGA. Yeah, but I don't have. Okay, we do uh, yep. Harmonico first. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. And Team 3 is uh, switching laptop. Okay, Harmonico. The team. Is there an image? Can you, can you say uh, you are the team? What's your name? Torn. Lucas. Okay, Torn, Lucas. Can we see something? You can see the monitor there. Why is it? Okay. Oh, no. We have two screens. <laughs> two screens, I don't know why. Speed it up, give me two screens. Okay, um, <laughs> okay I'll just start. Well. It's, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's big enough, right? I mean, it's more about what I say. It's, uh, I'm not going to show. A Please use the microphone. Picture. It's under the we laptop. Have to switch screen button. Which of these buttons is a switch screen button? I can't see it. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a new uh, machine. I'll just. Uh, it's okay. okay. We can continue. Okay, we are uh, team 42. We used to be team 5, but we hacked it to 42. My name is Dick Janssen. Uh, I've got with me uh, Lucas Schneider and Thorin Hopkins. Sauer? Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
They are from uh, Cologne area in Germany, and they are very, very good at uh, hardware uh, development, I noticed. Um, what, um, what is the idea about uh, Harmonico? Well, Harmonico stands for harmon harmonizing with your ecosystem. Uh, and rough lines, the, what you do is you measure utility meters, electricity, uh, gas, and water. Uh, you improve uh, your consumption through insight. Um, uh, you don't send your uh, uh, measured data outside the house, so you keep it inside the house, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's secure. And um, it's a, you're able to give a very good advice as to the best provider for your particular measured profile. Okay, measure. I, I just put a picture there of a uh, normal, ordinary uh, electricity meter. And um, the challenge was to measure this, uh, these devices from the outside. So you cannot get in, so you have to somehow uh, find a way to, uh, to measure it. And uh, I used a simulated environment uh, with a people counter. That's a little clicky device that uh, yeah, I use as a simulator. Um, I forgot where. Oh, here. Uh, maybe you can show the jury. <laughs> OK, the first prototype, uh, you can see a picture on the left. Um, uh, what you see on the bottom, well, well what they did what, um, was uh, use two infrared LED LEDs and um, well the LED would project light and the other one would uh, record it and um, they would detect transitions by the varying capacitance of the LEDs. I didn't know that was possible but they hacked it and that's the thing you have in, the, in your hand, uh, well that's at the jury table now, okay you have a bag. Okay, then we decided uh, it was not re really reliable. Let's do uh, something else. Let's f uh, fit a dedicated reflection meter on a, uh, a clicker like, uh, like I uh, showed you. And those results were promising, but that was half an hour ago. So <laughs> uh, we worked till the last uh, minute. Um, okay, I'm gonna show, th this is gonna be a little bit quicker. Um, the, the 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 idea was that you could you would be able to access your data through a, um, a browser going to the local to a local web server inside your house, so the data does not leave your house. This is a little uh, sample I wrote just to visualize the data, um, and like I said, it's secure. The data will not go outside your house. The smart meters uh, that are there, uh, they all almost all of them send data to the provider. And in this solution, that won't happen. Okay, and then in the end, you can give a optimal uh, advice as to what best, uh, what is the best utility provider given your measured profile for electricity, gas, and maybe water. Okay, there's a website that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna post this on that website as well. I'm gonna show you a little video that was made of the device. Yeah. Where's my mouse? <laughs> Where? I hear. Play? Play. It's on the other screen. And this? Ah, uh, no, it can't. Uh, I don't know how to switch screens. So, <laughs> okay, so uh, we can do a live stream. We can do a. Yeah? Okay, uh, um, maybe we have a minute in, uh, in, a, in a half an hour or so. We can uh, live show you how. We can just say, we can just say what it is. In half an hour, we are done. <laughs> 
It essentially, uh, when you press a button, um, it uh, tries to detect the change in the reflectivity um, of the dial that is moving um, and uses this um, to trigger an event. You know, so, so it, it triggers, um, well, in our demonstration, it simply says click on screen when you press the button. And there is no electronic no, there contact, is there is no camera. Oh, it's working now? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, so we can see it. Oh. Maybe we. What the? <laughs> How is it? Every single one here is a nerd. Everybody programs. Why? Why can't we get presentations to work? <laughs> okay, there it is. Do you think? There you see. So uh, when you press the button. Um, it registered, uh, registers this and uh, displays that a button has been pressed simply by uh, using, well, abusing um, an ultraviolet or actually infrared LED um, as a sensor. Yeah, that's all there is. <laughs> um, and uh, the reason why we can't do a live demonstration is uh, because our sensor is. Uh, a little bit too sensitive at the moment. Uh, it's the best we could hack together in two days. And as soon as we connect some device that is connected to main powers, uh, we get readings that do not make any sense anymore. That's, yeah. It works uh, if it's near a cable or something, but it doesn't work if it's directly connected. So, let's okay, let's, <laughs> let's, see, let's see if the jury has a question for this uh, project. Uh, if it's all clear, then it's, uh, it's okay. Why did you choose not to um, get into the meters you want to read out? Because uh, probably um, a company like Neon, etc., does want uh, people to select the best provider. Um, well, one reason why we can't just uh, hack the meter directly is because we are not allowed to. Um, the devices are closed and are connected uh, uh, by professionals. You are not allowed to change anything around these meters. Um, you can actually, behind these meters, edit things in your system, but that's very hard, and uh, you may kill yourself during this, so it's not a good idea. Um, so yeah, this is a safe solution, and it's legal. You can just clamp it uh, on your meters, and it reads the values, and you don't need to change anything in your system. Thank you very much, the Harmonico team. Now we have uh, another try for the XP VRD. Microphone. Thank you. Let's hope that now with uh, the things will work, actually, because we have a visualizing group. Introduce your names and your yep. title. Um, we're XPVRD. We're glad to meet everyone here after this uh, long hackathon that was provided. Um, we're a team of three people, uh, Jochen, Jasper, and me, Victor, which we are developing um, on a virtual reality um, experience through a 3D, and we use the open data standard which is uh, w what we're doing. Uh, I want to mention something about the team and organization, how we, uh, what was the aim of the project, uh, how it was organized. And uh, the aim of the project is to, because uh, we all know that the graphs are usually boring to watch, and uh, we wanted to create uh, something that is really dynamic, really nice to watch, and really natural to the human eye. And you can probably interact with it, and uh, also change it, make it dynamic, um, and also an open starter that we can implement. We implemented uh, an open data functions that actually any uh, data in available in HTML format will be able to be loaded into our uh, software. And uh, we can also load data from uh, web servers, including direct fetching of uh, data, which is uh, real time. And uh, our project is uh, we try to make it very robust to work with um, um, all types of data. So we are pretty happy about that. So I would like to explain something how uh, this project was organized and uh, what we actually created. 
We created a virtual uh, environment where you can actually plug the data that it, we fetched from the web server, so a local data file, and uh, the software visualized the data um, um, in a, a, some chart. And we also display the type of data, how it is uh, visualized, and we can actually put them through uh, 3D glasses, so you can experience it in a 3D virtual environment. So we really think that the implementation of this project could be really huge. Uh, first, um, um, won't reach probably the users and the end users, but probably enterprise sector uh, could be interested in this project to make uh, use of graphs more interactive, more natural to the humans. And uh, we also, uh, m we're thinking about making all of those things a little bit more interactive and a little bit more uh, natural. Uh, of course, now after a few minutes, we're going to see a live demo. Uh, and uh, just before the live demo, I want to uh, say that probably the best way to experience uh, our project is to try it yourself and um, see it. We'll try to make it as close as possible, the experience to the screen, and bring you how it's actually made. And uh, we're actually thinking about uh, if uh, everything works that uh, we can make another way of seeing graphs from now on. But before the demo, we would like to take our family, moms, fathers, dads, and uh, everyone in this room for the support and a uh, really nice uh, environment that was created and also the organizers of this uh, hackathon. Thank you. Uh, by the way, do we have any questions before the live demo? Or would you like to try it first? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, please come in. Uh, so we have a, a cable, so it cannot go very far. Oh. Yeah, uh, the H, that should be. Okay, the, the jury is now brainwashed. <laughs> so what you're watching now is uh, what the spendings. The spendings of the Dutch government uh, on local uh, on foreign affairs for the last couple of years. Um, so you turn it to the top of the yeah? Well, the cable is actually yeah. short, and we have only one hundred meters. Yeah. So, so what you're looking at? Bring it later. You can walk. Let's say. Let's walk to the tall charts here, and let's see. Well, this is the United Nations. Uh, Spending on the uh, United Nations uh, Population Fund. And you can walk out here. You say, oh, that's 81 million euros. Oh, that's quite a lot. And you can walk, walk a little further. And you see, oh, it's uh, industrial development. Oh, that's almost nothing. So it's a way how to visualize it. Please try it. And then we will try to hook it up to the display. So other people can experience it. So what you're looking now is the data as it's been visualized, that's real data. And uh, you're looking at only one example that we actually put, but they could, we can stack as many data as we want in one place and actually make like a data walk through a virtual environment. And you can see all of those spendings is uh, example data from uh, spending of the Dutch government to a foreign affairs. And uh, on the right, you can see that, um, that actually on what affair we spend the money. And if we go to the left, I will just uh, navigate you through the data. Uh, you can see how much actually the Dutch government spent. And you can walk through the data and experience it yourself. And uh, you can see the graph. Yeah. We have to finish the demo. We can okay. see it later. OK. Okay, okay. Uh, I think we're ready for some questions from the jury. Well, Are there any questions? You, you can put the uh, video on the screen yep. in the can meanwhile. Put it over there. Yep. So, uh, Disconnect the HDMI. Is there a question guide. from the jury? Perhaps we have a specific group in mind so that uh, uh, just uh, plug it in. Apply. Yeah, the question from the jury. Yep. Do, you do you have a specific uh, target group in mind that would 
be very, very much helped by this kind of design? Uh, yes, so we think that for now, as I said in my presentation, uh, we think that for now, probably the end user won't be rich because we're using uh, a 3D glasses, which for now is pretty expensive. But as far as companies goes, that probably will be interesting, especially companies that manage big data that is fetched to web servers, they could uh, make uh, a conference with all those people and all those 3D glasses, and they can make uh, a virtual walk through the, through the data, throughout the data that they have. And that is completely possible with the, the, the software that we created. So I hope this answers your question, sir. Thank you. One more question? Or are we done? OK, are we good? Yeah, uh, we can see actually the we live demo. Okay. So this is what it actually uh, you can see through the 3D glasses. You and you can navig navigate and see the data. Okay. What you see is, yeah. Yep. That is, thank That's you very it. much. Thank you. A big hand for this brilliant presentation. So the next one is called Car Unlocker. Anybody got a DVI VGA thing, Guy? DVI VGA. Yeah? Yeah. Check. No, that's, that's, that's the small one and the big one. Just big one. DVI cable. No, no, no. Can somebody, can somebody hack the connectors? Yeah. Okay, can you give me the DPI or something? Oh. I don't think it's Yeah, great. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, problem solved. Okay. Car unlocker. Have we a bell or not? You can see the image there. You are a bit green. So uh, ben ik een beetje groen. Ja, VGA. Ja, dat heb je altijd als gedoe. Hier zo. Oké. Oké. Do you have a mic? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Johan Henselmans. Uh, I'm supposed to be here working on a working prototype of an open thermostat. Uh, I got here uh, uh, tomorrow, yesterday uh, afternoon, and I discovered that that was the only one that showed up. So I had a sort of a problem because I didn't know what to do. So uh, without further ado, I um, thought about something else that I was planning already for a, a long time, which is, uh, which I now have given the name, my car is your car. Um, I first said it was car unlocker, but I thought it was a better name. It's Mika Yoka. My car is your car. And what, what does it do? What does it do? Well, there's an organization which is called My Wheels. And what it does is that you can rent your car to other people. So instead of using a green wheels car or a share wheels car or a wheels for all car or whatever car, you just use the car from people in the neighborhood. And uh, I, um, I uh, subscribe to this service. Uh, about four or five weeks ago, on a Thursday evening, and on Friday morning, I went to Britannia for a week. And on Friday afternoon, I got a first phone call from somebody that we wanted to use the car, which is nice, of course, especially if you're not there. And uh, so I was somewhere else, and somebody could have rented my car, but you know I can't give him the key, and that's that's the problem uh, uh, with this this whole uh, organization because you're supposed to have a direct contact to one another. So I came up with the idea to make something which is called a um, car unlocker, also known as Mikayoka, 
Uh, what it does is there's inside a car, you build something like this, but then better, of course. This is just a prototype, uh, which is a G, uh, GSM uh, shield, which receives by SMS uh, an ID from the card that somebody uses. And that card can be anything which has an NFC in it. So, for instance, if you have a public library card, you can use that NFC code to use it. Uh, if you've got a, a public transport car, you can use that NFC code to use it. So you, you're not, uh, it's not necessary to uh, have some kind of special card uh, to use that kind of stuff. Uh, what it does uh, after uh, the NFC, the, 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 the message is sent to the card, uh, uh, to, the, to the car, then um, there's not a shield in, inside this thing, which is an NFC shield which actually reads the card if it's presented to, uh, to the, 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 the window. And if it uh, is presented to the window, it will uh, authenticate it in some way uh, that it's the correct person and it's the correct date, et cetera, et cetera. And then it will do two things um, through this other shield, which is a, a relay. Uh, it will unlock one of the doors and it will unlock a vault which is inside the car. So, and inside the vault in the car, you will have the key of the car. So you don't have to uh, have any kind of electronic um, car unlocking system, whatever. So you're not, you're not, you're not uh, 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 depending on all kinds of electronics which is currently available in all of the, of the, the, the modern cars. Um, so, uh, this, uh, uh, today I did a test with uh, one of these cars, these electronic uh, uh, car uh, uh, thingies. And apparently somebody was so willing to win this competition that he, he broke it. You know, he, he actually, he actually, he, 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 that guy over there, <laughs> he is the one. So, <laughs> no, but seriously, I couldn't, uh, we, we couldn't get it to work, but it, 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 it broke somehow. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this this is how it how it uh, works at the moment. So I, uh, the moment somebody somebody asks for me, okay, uh, can I get your car? Um, I, I n n mostly uh, some some most of the times that stuff is already uh, you know you know these people. Like for instance, I've got a I've got a guy that uh, regularly uh, rents my car at the moment. So if he wants to rent my car, I send the NFC his number to uh, the the receiver. The receiver then uh, stores it somewhere in the, in the thing. And then the moment, uh, as you can see, um, it also checks for the, the telephone number where it comes from. So you, no, not everybody can send an SMS message to the, to the receiver. It's only on certain uh, telephone numbers that will accept, uh, that will accept messages for it. You can imagine that that is also, you know, it's all kinds of security things which are involved in that. Uh, so it, it gets uh, the NFC uh, ID. Uh, the moment when, it's, uh, when it gets one of these things, it gets over there. As you can see, there's a beautiful NFC car there, which is a public transport car. Uh, unfortunately, the guy over there uh, is not secure, so he won't open the, the car. Uh, but the moment when there is somebody uh, um, which has the correct card, it will uh, unlock the door and uh, it will open the car, and then you can get into the vault and get the key and then drive away from it. So that's uh, what I've uh, implemented uh, uh, at the moment. Um, the idea is that after this uh, thing is, uh, uh, if, if I get uh, this thing back from that guy over there and it actually works, you know, this, uh, <coughs> I will uh, try to get uh, more, more of the stuff that's necessary to get a sort of secure way of making sure that somebody that uses your car is not abusing it and things like that. So I was thinking about, there's actually, in the shield, there's also a GPS uh, module. So you can actually uh, see how fast somebody is driving with your car. Uh, you can actually, well, I don't know if you know, want to know where he exactly was going, so you have to be, you know, a bit careful with that. Uh, but uh, another option was to, be, to, uh, was to use the ODB2 part of, well, most of the cars that uh, exist since, I don't know, 1995 or something like that, um, to, uh, to, to, score, to, to log the information from that. And to log that information, I think it's better to use a, a Raspberry Pi or something like that as an Arduino because the, the storage uh, problems on, on an Arduino are just you know, it's too small for, for getting that uh, stuff. Okay. So that's it. 
and uh, of course uh, a lot of security stuff and uh, making a website and uh, making sure that you don't have to use the telephone to uh, send it to uh, to the, the the current locker but uh, use something like uh, an sms daemon somewhere okay that's it okay thank you very much big hand for the car and locker there's a question from the jury uh, usability for uh, left-handed users say i want to rent your car and well, I've got a smartphone, say I've got a Nokia uh, 3102 or something like that. Yeah. How can I obtain uh, the number um, for my NFC card? Uh, With this phone, I just yeah. scan it. But yeah, well, well, what, uh, normally the standard procedure would be the, the first time when you meet, uh, what, 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 what is normally in my will is that one time you meet, just to make sure that you're not an idiot or something like that. So at that moment, you can actually, well, you, you know, there, there are crazy people in the world, especially in Amsterdam where I'm living. So uh, to make sure that, so the first time you will meet and then you can make some kind of uh, arrangement uh, to read in the card and do something with it. And actually, you, you, can, you can actually do it also with the NFC Shield, which is available on the Arduino. So. Okay. Thank you. Have you thought about, um, after that car trip, what to do with the, with the key? Do you put it back in that safe and, and close the thing? And, and I mean, after you rented it from somebody? Um, yeah, put it, put it back in the vault. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. We have the next presentation. <laughs> next presentation, title is changed into smart sporting. Who's going to present? I will be presenting and also Arnold. Okay. Yeah, you can start, you will start. I, I okay. Will, will plug it in? Can you connect? So we see a demonstration build up here. Is anything happening? What? Yeah, it's What's the build up? It's not open. We have had five presentations, four more to go. Smart porting. Okay. okay. Can I start? Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today I'll be presenting our project, which is called Smart Sporting. It's me, Michael, and Armel, Edgar, Ardena, and Geraldi. And our project is um, called Smart Sporting. And um, basically, we started thinking about the future cities. And what we came up was the future gym. Now, most of us, um, when we go to gym, we spend a lot of our energy there and it doesn't really go to good use. We are basically wasted in the machines. So our idea was to basically track each user as they go to the gym and be able to harvest some of their energy. And basically, we will also be able to um, collect other data such as their heart rate, their breathing rate, and their temperature. And by, by tracking this, we can give users a better idea of their health and exercise habits. We will also... Um, motivate people to exercise more, and we will do this by having incentives. For instance, the more people work out, um, the more discount they will get at the store or um, stores which are affiliated with the gym, and the more they work out, the less their gym membership will also be. So by working out more, you will have more benefits from it, not just the health benefits. And um, the benefits that this will give to the gym is They'll be able to save some electricity by harvesting the electricity that the people generate. And they'll also be able to receive um, benefits and subsidies from governments for the efforts in reducing the CO2 emissions. So basically, at the moment, we have two practical applications where we can demonstrate how this works. We have one which is a bunch of LED lights, which will basically demonstrate how this energy can be used to power the lights in the sports center. And the other um, application is a cell phone charger. Now, our idea, our idea was to build cell phone chargers into the lockers 
So when you go to the sports center, you can put yourself in a locker and charge it while you gym. And yeah, so you wouldn't have to leave it overnight in a charger and waste electricity that way. So yeah, um, by our estimates, we think we can probably get around 20 watts per person when they work out. So yeah, we'll be able to generate some electricity. So um, Armel will now take over and explain the um, software we have and also our application. Hi, I'm Sid, I'm Armel, and I'll be talking about, I'll be demonstrating the, how the, the system works. Here basically on the board, we can see the trend of the power that is being generated when someone, let's say, is cycling or doing some kind of sport that generates energy. Here, we, at the beginning, we can see a trend that you said the person was maybe running fast, and then later on, we can see the person is lowering down. That's why the trend is a little bit more stable at that stage. Here, uh, we also should treat main things. The first one represents the, the energy, which is 0 0.58 watt. The, the second one is the temperature to, of, the, of the, the body of the person, which is 24.67. And the third one is the heartbeat, the rate at which it, the, the, the heartbeat. Yeah, and down there, the person can also see the discount he has. Now the person has something like 2% discount, and he can see everything there. He can see the discount of his membership cards already. And he can also see the energy the person is generated, which is 472 watt per hour. So here we can see what we tried to build in 32 hours, let's see. Yeah, a lot of wires, but we needed them to make it work. Basically, what we have is that we assume that everything comes from someone who is running or maybe someone who is cycling. So just needs a rotation movement. Once we have the rotation, we, as we said, okay, we can take that movement and convert, put it into a dynamo. After the dynamo, we have energy. That energy which comes out of the dynamo is an AC signal. We have to somehow make a way to have a DC signal so that we can use it to charge our phone, as my colleague just said. So all those things are used to convert the energy. And here we also have a couple of sensors, sensors that we use for the heartbeat and the temperature. And uh, yes, they will all be shown in, in the demo. And maybe, maybe the jury would like to, to come and see how the demo works. Yes, so first, I think we can we will start with the uh, with maybe the heart rate. Yeah, sure. We will start with the heart rate. Here, the circuit is built for to measure the heart rate. Here, now we're going to put there. We see that the LED is blinking. Yes, now he's shaking. That's why. So we can see we can basically see the LED blinking going on and off. So we collect data from it. We will process through Arduino, and later on we will use it to display graph that we will show you to you people. And the second thing is this thermistor. We use this thermistor to measure the temperature of the, the body. The person is running. If we launch it, he has to, to put his ID code. So we know that, for instance, Edgar is using it. Yeah, and we can also, we also, the third one is the power. You basically, we needed something just to turn the generator. We could have done it with hands, but I think this is more, that was more practical. Here we have it turning. We need a little bit more torque to start. This is yeah, the we noise. Can charge, we want to show you how we're charging the phone. Noise. Here we charge the phone. Yeah, here we can see that we're charging the phone, which is a five volt output USB using part USB cable. Ah, uh, yes, so that works. Maybe it's through just prototyping, maybe some things like current nano rail adjusted, but it's just prototype. And we can then, if we switch it, then we have this demo just to show people, everybody in the room, that we really have energy somewhere. And that energy can be used later on to be saved in a battery or whatever you use. 
and we will finish. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So it really worked. The, it was a working prototype. Proof has been given. You have a question? No questions? Okay, thank you very much. Can we have a big hand for this team? So the next one uh, is not smart doorbell because uh, someone rang the door and now they have to answer the door first. Uh, Flexity, can I ask Flexity to present? Take the stage. Where's the microphone? I can hear it. The other one, here. <laughs> Flexity. We have three more to go. We won't make it before four o'clock. <laughs> okay, can you make it concise one, in yeah. five minutes? We try. Flex for four, concise in yeah. five minutes. We try. Flex for four. Testing. Okay. Ouais, je vois pas. Tu es là? Je suis là? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, it has been a great pleasure to uh, hack and code for uh, 36 hours, um, barely without sleep. Um, I'm uh, Sami, uh, and this is uh, Florent, Penny, and Paul. And we have come out with a project called Flex City in the theme of City of the Future and uh, Mobility. Next slide. Okay, so the aim of Flex City is uh, to generate an online database of uh, defined and alternative movements of people within the city. And uh, that information will provide um, uh, the municipality or city planners or architects um, more intuitive ways to use the cities according to the, to the data and to, to, to see how the city are actually being used by the, the citizens. Next slide. Okay, so... The data provide information to uh, both uh, city planners and uh, city users. And those data will highlight how people actually uh, come or where the bikes actually go if they go off tracks of the bike lanes or where more uh, pedestrians uh, will be in the city and also the cars. And, and that will be um, independent of the road or, or the pathways determined. So to check what are the alternatives road that users uh, take the initiative to go to. Um, so um, the information uh, that can be used for uh, city planners, uh, they will be mostly to identify, uh, for instance, uh, area of high congestions. So for instance, if you see that a lot of cars goes in that, uh, that, that road or a lot of pedestrian in, in a really small area, then you would like to maybe extend it in the future uh, by, by, by redesigning the space. Um, also in planned route, for instance, um, I'm, I'm walking somewhere, but I can see that there is a shortcut, and, and, uh, and actually a lot of people will see that shortcut, and then we'll all go that, there, and, and, and maybe it's, it's smart to design a, a path here. Um, also obstruct path, so maybe um, you have a big highway, and if, you, if your house uh, is, is um, on the other side, you will have to do a big uh, um, round, uh, round, and maybe a lot of people will do that as well, and you maybe want to build a bridge over it. And also to uh, analyze actually how the city is uh, moving, how people move in the city. Um, next slide. 
Um, and also, the city users uh, can benefit from those data for uh, their personal use. So you can, for instance, uh, every day I'm going to the IT campus to work. I'm taking one path since two years. Maybe there is another one which is shortest that I don't know. Um, also, if you want to go in the city in the afternoon, you can also see where it's less crowded to walk around if it's nice weather, for instance. Um, you can also find shortcuts, and you can also find some information about your surrounding area and, and whatsoever. So basically, how does it work? Um, uh, we have a phone, um, and um, lot of, uh, a lot of us, uh, um, <laughs> most of you have a smartphone, and the smartphone has a GPS inside. And basically, how does it work? We have made an app um, that uh, will uh, start tracking your GPS coordinates and uh, collecting those data into uh, and, and send them to database. And uh, you can choose to be a voluntary participant to that experiment that will mostly come from the city hall, for instance. Uh, the data will be uh, retrieved anonymously, so there is no problem with the, the, the tracking of the users. But again, it's a voluntary uh, use, so you are aware of what you're doing with the GPS coordinates. Um, the, uh, the application can or start, uh, you start it and you stop it, or uh, it can also be automatically uh, switched on when you leave your house by your NFC reader in the door, for instance, and automatically switch off when you stop walking and your speed is uh, zero. And uh, those data that are generated by the phone are automatically uploaded on uh, the visualization platform and the online platform. Next slide. Okay, so for instance, that's uh, one of example of the visualization for, for instance, the user side. So basically, I'm a user, I'm Carl, and I'm going on the website. This is my path that I have taken. And for instance, I can, um, um, I can, say, I can add a comment and say, but this path, I don't like to take this path, for instance. So that's a comment will be here, and I, I will upload that, that will be uploaded on, my, uh, on, on the user side. Um, can you go next slide? Yeah. And this, for instance, is uh, the, um, the, the, the architects or city hall site where they actually they can visualize the, the, the path of Carl and they can also add their own things. So, for instance, they can add uh, the path that they want to create or the new project, for instance, of a building in the city. So, here, for instance, project of uh, a new block in Eindhoven. And you can see that all the projects will interfere with the routes that are already been taken. And the municipality can use the data that Carl has uploaded to see how they can design a better surrounding of this new block. So, um, so as I said before, you have the smartphone. Um, I can um, just show it to you. Just the app is um, simple. We have make an Android app. And basically, you have a start button. Though no, it's starting to record the GPS. You see GPS activated here. And you can stop it. And the data are, are sent to the website. Um, so, yeah, open the website. Yes. Okay, a little problem with the server, but yeah. so basically that's the website. Um, so here we have some data has been generated, and basically uh, you can select what you want to see. So if you want to see the pedestrian roads. They all be here, and basically all what you see here. <laughs> <laughs> what you see here is all around the uh, fontis because we have uh, walked a lot during uh, uh, the two days to generate data. You see, you see the highlights of Antwerp. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we also have took uh, our bikes. So if you update now, you have a lot of bikes path. So we have been a bit further away to yeah. TUE and to uh, Kreuzstraat, for instance, and we don't have a car. We are really co-friendly, but we have uh, simulated data that we have a car, just to show that it works. And basically, how it detects it, it's that you have GPS coordinates, and they measure every uh, meters, uh, uh, how much you have, uh, every second, how much you have, you have uh, walked, and it calculates automatically the speed, and it averages it all on, on the old data tracking, and at the end, if the speed is before, between 0 and 10, it's a walking, and 10 and, and 20, it's a bike, and, and more than 20, it's a car. And then it's automatically generated here. 
And, and public transportation is not added yet because it's like a car, so it's, it's, uh, we have to do some, some more thing. Um, back to presentation, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so basically that's the, the, the scheme. It's uh, the phone upload on the database and uh, on the website. Next slide. So by hacking the city through crowd data sourcing, uh, we give individual the opportunity to shape their city and the future city where they will live. And it's also, uh, it will develop a more flexible urban environment where the city will evolve according to the needs of the users. Next slide. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, so as again, uh, I want to thank Florent Noel, who is a um, software engineer, um, Paul Lehouk, who is an interaction designer, um, Penny Webb, which is a contextual designer from Zen Academy, and uh, yeah, myself, I'm a research engineer. So thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, um, please. <laughs> you have a big hand. Yes. I actually have a question. If I'm, let's assume that I'm uh, collecting data for you for the project with my smartphone, what's basically in it for me? Uh, I mean, I'm walking around collecting yeah. data. Can I yeah. something? We have thought of this. Yeah. So for instance, if uh, this, this thing is being used by the city, uh, the app, I know that, for instance, they will be providing the apps. And in return, you can have a deduction in tax, for instance, because this is going to be used for designing the city and, and to, to encourage people, then uh, you will have less tax to pay or benefits on something. If you download the app, you have, you, you can think of all kinds of rewards from people using the app. That you're, you're actually an actor of how the city is evolving. You are shaping your city. Because if the municipality decides to use those data to re, uh, reorganize, reconfigure the city, then it's, benefit, it's, a, it's a huge benefit for you because they actually take into consideration how you use the city and how you can use it better, I think. That's, that's the idea. Uh, I see you're using an Android uh, Samsung phone. What's the average battery life? Yeah, we, we didn't take that into consideration, but obviously if you want to make that into a product, you want to, to optimize the, the, the way the, the GPS is used, yeah. so that you don't, of course, you don't dry out, you don't dry out the, the device battery. Yeah, uh, GPS is dry, it drains batteries. So. Yeah. yeah. Then, um, because, because you can turn it on and off, you can, you can either leave it on and in automatic mode, or you can choose to turn the data on and off. Yeah, I don't know. Would have to switch. I would do it with a, some kind of interval or something. Yeah, there's a. Thank you very much, Flex City. Next presentation is the smart doorbell. Do you use the uh, projector, laptop? Coming up, smart doorbell. Smart orbell. Is there a I can see it here. Oh, okay, okay, nice. Okay. And that is mine. Okay. Jose, go ahead. Can you Everything works. <laughs> introduce the team and the title? Um, hello, everybody. I'm glad to introduce you. My team, team number eight. We are actually with 10 uh, people, uh, but not everyone can be uh, with us uh, this uh, hour. Uh, and um, today we are happy to present you our uh, new idea about the future doorbell. Um, this idea was born from idea of a connected home, and the doorbell was there not included. With uh, our uh, new vision, we can see the doorbell like a future connected device. Um, why do you need uh, and uh, very smart doorbell? First of all, you cannot always hear him when you are, uh, for example, in the garden with barbecue and somebody coming by, you can just not hear it in the garden, uh, your doorbell, or when you are on this uh, roof terrace or in the bus, but uh, especially when you are on balcony, so you don't know <laughs> who is calling there. <laughs> so it's uh, 
But there is uh, on, and one uh, more point. When you are not at home, you don't know who was on your front door. And there is much more point. Uh, first of all, uh, from the study of the marketing, we know that uh, a lot of aged people always worried, did they close the door or did they didn't close this door? We can make with our uh, doorbell such an application that the door will uh, say you immediately when you uh, forgot to close it. So it is, will be very added uh, value, for, uh, value for a lot of people. The next uh, uh, pain is, did postman deliver the package or not? When you're expecting something, of course you are worried, was it uh, uh, brought to you or not? Who is visiting my home when I am absent? I wish I can avoid some unpleasant people at the door. Uh, you can uh, uh, decide, do you open your door or not, when you have an intelligent doorbell. And, um, is it possible to let somebody inside remotely, so without uh, walking to the door and open it? Uh, is it possible to download a different melodies for my doorbell, like ringtones on the, uh, uh, on the mobile phone? Yes, it's possible. It's possible with uh, a smart uh, doorbell, who will be equipped with a web camera, with a microphone, and the speakers. Nice design, of course. He will be uh, uh, connected with router. Router will be connected with your smartphone or with your uh, iPad. And uh, then the smartphone will be connected with all home, actually. And maybe with all world, if you like. That is a uh, design uh, we, had in, uh, we uh, thought about. And uh, of course, you can use this basis model to uh, with um, all these tastes in the world. You can make uh, from the same model a different uh, kind of uh, <laughs> uh, designs using uh, the same technology, the same idea. And we even make a very nice logo of our <laughs> the smart doorbell. But um, uh, you are very interested in demo, I guess, if that's uh, possible uh, to show right now. So, uh, for our demo, you have to uh, uh, look <laughs> and decide. Uh, as you see, you have to imagine that we are a little bit in the future, and that is your future front door. It looks like Star Trek, yes, it is a <laughs> Star Trek idea. And that is the front door of this uh, uh, boy, this blonde there, and he is in the shower. He expecting his uh, girlfriend, who is also expecting to see his boyfriend. <laughs> so it is uh, like she wanted to see him so badly that she was a little bit too early, and he was in the shower. <laughs> but... <laughs> Okay. Oh, in history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is was a happy, happy end. <laughs> and uh, maybe we can also show you how you can to change a different uh, 
kind of uh, melodies. Uh, we need to press the doorbell. Okay, we have uh, several more melodies, uh, unless you wanted to hear all of them, <laughs> and uh, they all were working. <laughs> but uh, uh, that was uh, our presentation, and we are wondering about your uh, reaction. What do you think about it? And maybe you have any questions, please. Thank you very much. Great. Big applause. <laughs> maybe the jury has a question for this application. Could you consider using your doorbell like this? Perhaps you have two adaptations, but uh, I, th I think about it. But it's, it's, it's interesting, it's clear. Thank you very much. We have uh, the last presentation of driving analytics. We had to pursue uh, this group not to take the car on the stage, <laughs> so they will do the presentation with the laptop. Yes, well, uh, the last page of today. Uh, save the best for the last. This is. Uh, I'm uh, Remco, and I uh, did this, uh, this idea, and we, I built it with uh, Rolf. We actually had the idea about uh, collecting the, your uh, information about your driving style while you're driving around with your car, like uh, using the GPS uh, sensor of your phone and the accelerometer to collect data uh, and do some interesting stuff with it. So we uh, decided to use a standard Android phone and uh, use the accelerometer and the GPS sensor to uh, get some data from the phone and in the end uh, visualize it on a Google Maps uh, map. So uh, this is uh, one data point created uh, last night around uh, one o'clock in the, in the night. So uh, we actually took a car and started driving around on the, to the IKEA and back uh, on the Kennedy Lane. And uh, we actually made five trips. The first two trips were uh, driving a bit slow, uh, driving real careful, uh, adhering to speed limits, and also adhering to the recommended speed limits. And then we uh, made two trips while driving a bit more uh, aggressive, a bit more fast, uh, sometimes breaking the speed limit a bit. And then uh, the last uh, trip was really breaking the speed limit, uh, driving as fast as we could, and uh, really getting a really, really horrible data set with uh, really aggressive G-forces around the car. And, uh, <laughs> and in the end, we also tried uh, to break as uh, fast as possible to, uh, to also uh, measure a data set uh, with uh, breaking really fast. <coughs> so, and, uh, yeah, so we collected the data. Uh, we imported the data in a database, like because we can. So uh, we have collected the, the GPS data, the location, the, and the, the data from the accelerometer. The accelerometer uh, measures on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. 
and then you can use that data to measure, uh, to calculate the g-forces exerted on the car. So uh, the general idea behind it was to um, to give advice to you, like uh, if you if you have a certain point where you brake often very fast or very hard, or if you have a corner with sharp uh, g-forces exerted on your car, then we can advise you to drive a bit more slowly, drive a bit more uh, relaxed, or give an early warning that you're reaching a point where often something goes wrong, that you have to brake very fast, that you already are alerted of uh, of the status of the, of the road. Or if something happens uh, a few kilometers ahead of you, someone else who is using the app can send, uh, the app will send an alert to other uh, people driving around with the app. And then you get a warning that something went uh, wrong a few kilometers ahead of you. So um, yeah, we used uh, the data from more, uh, what we want to do is uh, use the data from more sources like uh, get the data from the car, uh, combine the data with uh, traffic information and uh, a lot of other users of situations as I just uh, told. And uh, also uh, we could add a gaming element to it that uh, we select some areas where <laughs> the user who drives the, with the most g-forces through a certain corner wins without crashing the car because crashing a car is really little g-forces and in our opinion that's cheating. So and um, also we want to make the data set we create uh, publicly uh, available to other uh, departments like uh, the police. They can uh, they can monitor <laughs> if certain areas uh, people are driving really fast uh, or too fast on certain roads. Then they can put uh, a speed trap there, and uh, all the uh, road uh, the road maintainers they can uh, see that a lot of uh, people are driving. Are doing crazy stuff at certain points, like braking really fast, driving around with a lot of g-forces, then they can uh, change the road a bit, uh, place extra signs there, warning signs to alert people of a dangerous situation. Then they can uh, use this data to actually change the, to make it more safe uh, before something goes wrong. Because now, uh, most often, the police or the municipality only knows that something uh, is amiss when an uh, accident occurs. So and uh, also you could send your own data set to your uh, insurance company for a discount or just anything that's possible with the data set. The sky's the limit. <laughs> and um, we also have a, we can also show a small demo of uh, how the app looks. If it doesn't crash. <laughs> well, it stopped working. Click to exit, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Then we should see. Yep, there we have it. There you see the app. It's uh, the Android figure. Uh, actually, shows your current position, but since we cannot get a positive GPS lock inside this building, it's a dummy location at the moment. But we can uh, we can load certain data files. One minute, please. I have to uh, connect the SD card to the phone because uh, the data is stored on the SD card. And if I connect it to the PC, the SD card is connected to the PC instead of the phone. So give it a minute to connect. So let's see if it works now. We, yeah, now we have a few data sets uh, in the phone. There you see them. Uh, data sets is uh, currently stored with the uh, timestamp value of when it was created, but for a proof of concept, um, yeah, well, I take the one uh, from last night. It's uh, the most interesting one. It takes a while to load because it's a lot of data and there are a lot of, a lot of redraws on the user interface, so we're still some, uh, some work in progress. The uh, user takes about uh, 30 seconds to uh, pass the data and uh, draw everything. So now it says uh, draw on the map. And now here you see uh, actually what has happened. So uh, black is actually G-forces, uh, green is speeding up, and red is slowing down. And with the sliders at the lower section of the screen, we can, we can, trend, uh, we can change the thresholds at which point it's, uh, it will draw the line. So we change the threshold of the G-forces, and then we should get a bit more uh, realistic data instead of just drawing everything which is in the data set. 
And uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, it uh, takes some time to pass everything. The data sets are, this data set is about uh, two megabytes of data. So now you see that it, it has changed, it has taken out a lot of, uh, it's taken out a lot of information. And then we have one interesting corner here, which we, uh, we uh, a lot of you probably know it. It's uh, at the north side of the Kennedy Lane uh, towards IKEA. It's a very sharp bend, so you can get a lot of G-forces there. <laughs> so that's uh, our presentation. That's uh, what we built. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question from the jury. Two questions. How many fines do you expect and does the car still exist? The car, the car at the moment still exists. It's on the parking lot outside. And I hope I don't get any parking fines because I know where the, where the speed traps... <laughs> oh, uh, speeding tickets because I know where the speed traps are on the Kennedy Lane, the, the route he took. So, and I didn't see any police cars uh, standing in the si on the side. <laughs> but if I get some, it will be uh, quite expensive. But it was uh, quite a fun experience to do this. So in my, in my opinion, it was worth it. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> this concludes the presentations, the pitches for the Science Hack Day 2013. And the jury now has a difficult task to uh, discuss uh, which of the presentations are, will be the winner. And we have a short intermezzo uh, in between and I will do some announcements. So if you could uh, stay for a while.